Well, good morning. It's uh, a privilege to be with you at St. Jude's. Uh, I'm Andy Emerton. I'm the uh, relatively new Bishop of Sherwood, and I'm very grateful to John for the invitation to uh, preach this morning. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you for your word, and we pray, Lord, that uh, it might shape our lives after the likeness of Jesus Christ. Help us to hear you, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favourite songs of last year's COVID lockdown was a song called The Blessing. I don't know whether you know it, but uh, it's a song by Elevation Worship in the US. It was released on YouTube back in March 2020. And uh, that version has since been viewed more than 56 million times. As you all know, the first lockdown followed very shortly after that. And uh, it's been a strange, uh, difficult and for many quite traumatic last 18 months um, from which we're only just beginning to emerge. And I guess one of the overriding themes of the last 18 months has been a sense of, of loss. Loss of our usual routines and, and patterns of life and the sense of loneliness and, and isolation for many that that has arisen as a result. Loss of economic certainty, uh, people experiencing furlough schemes, some even losing their jobs, and, and tragically, of course, even loss of life, the loss of, of loved ones or significant health challenges that many have experienced. And from a faith perspective, of course, we've lost quite a lot as well. Um, the loss of community, the, the loss of physical fellowship and, and the friendship that uh, for so many of us helps to keep our faith alive. Uh, the loss of corporate worship, uh, the significance of being together in one place, uh, able to sing, to respond to God's word, to, to pray, to share sacramentally in bread and wine uh, together. Now, of course, online has helped hugely. Uh, it's made us it possible for so many to be in touch you otherwise wouldn't have been able to. It's great to be uh, sharing this online with you this morning. And of course, for some on the fringe of the church, actually online has given them a way of accessing faith uh, in a, a safe way uh, from home. But we have missed out, I think. There's something really significant uh, about the people of God coming together, about us experiencing something of the power and the presence of God and God's spirit at work amongst uh, the gathered body of Christ. Uh, and if I'm honest, the, the last 18 months haven't been easy spiritually. It, it hasn't been easy to keep our faith in Jesus Christ alive. And one thing uh, that has really helped me is, is this song that I mentioned, The Blessing. It's based loosely on the words of the blessing that God teaches Moses to speak over the people of Israel in Numbers chapter six. And the song speaks of God being for us, of God's blessing being over us. May God's favour be upon you and a thousand generations on our families, our children and our children's children. And the prayer right at the heart of the song um, is this, is may his presence be upon you. May his presence go before you and around you and beside you. And there was just something about it for me, something that stirred my spirit, something that helped to keep my keep the fires burning, keep my faith alive, keep my relationship with Jesus Christ uh, engaged and helping me to, to reconnect with God when I, I was at times feeling far away from him. And it's that theme of God's presence, of meeting Jesus as we pursue the presence of God that I want to speak about this morning. Now, I think this is the theme which is at the heart of uh, Psalm 132. Uh, Psalm 132 is one of the Psalms of Ascent that you have been doing a little series on here at St. Jude's. And as I'm sure you know by now, these psalms are ones that would have been used by pilgrims as they made their way to Jerusalem for the three annual Jewish 
worship festivals during the year. And so the Psalms of, of Ascent are songs of worship, uh, which would have been said or sung on the ascent to Jerusalem, the, the journey up to the Temple Mount. Uh, and Psalm 132 has a particular focus on Jerusalem, on, on Zion, uh, on this uh, idea of Zion, of Jerusalem as the destination and goal, uh, because it's the place where God was believed to be uniquely, uniquely present with his people. Psalm 132, verse 7. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. And uh, verse 12, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation, his dwelling, saying, this is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. The, the consistent testimony of scripture is that an encounter with God's presence can have a significant impact on our lives. Uh, and so this is something that we are to pursue. Uh, Psalm 84 has a, a very similar theme running through it. You'll probably know it very well, perhaps from a, a Matt Redman uh, song. Uh, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. In verse 10 of that psalm, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. There's th this sense that an encounter with God coming into God's presence can really transform us. It can change us. Well, according to Psalm 132, uh, that sort of an encounter with God can bring salvation. Uh, verse 16 of, of Psalm 132, it's priests I will clothe with salvation. Now, I first encountered Jesus as a, well, quite a long time ago now, as a 13 year old, um, back in confirmation classes uh, in the front room of a, of a vicarage in the village where I grew up. Uh, and I encountered Jesus because of the faithful witness of a vicar, a priest, if you like, who was to echo these words of Psalm 132, clothed with salvation. Uh, and that two weeks after I was confirmed, I had my own encounter, what I would describe as, as my first real encounter with God's presence. I, I still remember it vividly. It, it was late one night. Uh, I, I was in bed. I was looking out at the window. The sky was crystal clear. It was a beautiful night. It was lots of stars and the moon and and. Um, well, I was trying to say some prayers. Uh, I don't think I was probably doing a very good uh, job of it. But, but suddenly I had this uh, sense of being overwhelmed by God's love for me. Now, I didn't have the language at the time, but um, to borrow some words of Paul from Romans chapter five, it, it was an experience of God's love being poured into my heart by the Holy Spirit. And the tears were, were streaming down my face, a little unusual for a 13 year old boy. Uh, but I knew I was loved. I knew my sin was forgiven. My shame was washed away. Uh, and looking back, that, that encounter with God's love, that encounter with the presence of God was where I began to understand something of what salvation really meant in my life. Uh, so it's been a long journey since. That's quite a few years uh, ago. And, and there's been plenty of ups and, and downs along the way, as we often all experience in the, this journey of faith. And, and it hasn't always been easy. But an encounter with God. An encounter with God's presence. And of course, that can happen in all sorts of different ways in our lives. But that has continued to be really important to sustaining my faith and my relationship with Jesus Christ. So God's presence brings salvation. It also brings joy. 
uh, Psalm 132, verse 16. It's faithful will shout for joy. Uh, or another translation, her faithful people will ever sing for joy. Uh, there's something about singing that stirs joy in our hearts. It's why I'm so pleased that, that we're able to begin to sing together again now. It's one of the other things that I'd really missed. Uh, that I'd really missed. Uh, I've got three uh, teenage children and I know when, when they're happy because I'll, I'll hear them singing. Uh, my middle one, my um, 13 year old uh, boy, he'll often deny it. Oh, Daddy, I, I wasn't singing. I heard him. I was singing. He was singing. And uh, I know that was just, uh, he sings when he's full of joy. And that was uh, why the blessing and other songs, that, that was one of the things that really kept me going uh, throughout uh, lockdown in the last 18 months, because I, I was able to join in maybe on my own, but I was able to join in singing and it stirred joy in my heart. Uh, joy, of course, is something that goes beyond our experience of life. It's something that uh, comes um, despite difficulties and struggles. It's not a feeling that we stir up. It's not something we have to strive for. It's not something we can earn. Uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, the, the French priest, philosopher, scientist and theologian, said this. He said that joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. Joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. And this, of course, is the joy of salvation. It's the gift of life that we know in Christ. Despite our circumstances, despite what is happening around us, despite the way that we are feeling, joy is one of the hallmarks of Christian discipleship. When people meet us, do they experience joy? Do they encounter something through us of the life-giving presence of God? So God's presence brings salvation. God's presence brings joy. And also Psalm 132, God's presence brings blessing. Verse 15, I will, ab I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Now, as it happens with uh, my new role as, as Bishop of Sherwood, my, my family and I have ended up living really very close to St. Jude's, very close to, to the church. And um, one of our neighbours who we, we've got to know a little bit is heavily involved in the Mapley Residence Association. And he told me that as uh, part of the, the local response to COVID um, over the last year or so, they have been the, the Residence Association have been supporting the local food bank, which is based at the, the Methodist Church. Uh, and he personally, as it happened, had been going along to the shops on a reasonably regular basis, buying food and delivering it to the food bank. Uh, and although there might have been lots that we've lost uh, as a result of COVID, actually, this has been one of the really positive things, I think. Uh, we've actually engaged with our neighbours. We, we've focused locally uh, a lot more and we've become more aware of uh, the needs of those around us. God's presence brings blessing. God's presence should result in people experiencing that, that blessing in, in all its abundance. Jesus said that he came to, that we might have life and life to the full, abundant life. And for those in need, for the poor in particular amongst us, that blessing sh should not just be a spiritual blessing. It, it should make a material and physical difference as well, exactly as the psalmist uh, expects here. So encounter with God's presence brings salvation, joy and blessing. How are we to go about pursuing it? How are we to go about pursuing God's presence and encounter with God? Well, first, we're to make every effort. Verse seven of Psalm 132, let us go to his dwelling place. Let us go to his dwelling place. In other words, 
we have to make some effort. We have a part to play in this. The, the psalm opens by outlining the lengths that David went to to provide a place for God to dwell. He swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. If we're going to pursue God's presence, then we're going to need to make every effort. Uh, I mentioned that the house we're living in is uh, not very far from St. Jude's. Uh, well, for the first time in our married life, uh, be largely because we've been living in London for the last 15 years uh, or so, for the first time in our married life, we, we are privileged to have access to a garden in the house. And it's actually quite a sizable garden. Uh, and if I'm honest, I don't really have a clue when it comes to gardening. Uh, and one of my neighbours, one of the neighbours must have sensed that, I think. As fairly early on, I, I got a phone call on my mobile uh, and it was from the neighbour who lives a, a few doors down. Uh, and it turns out is a bit of a garden expert. And I'm paraphrasing. He was absolutely lovely about it. But the, the gist of the conversation went something like this. He had known the previous owners of our house very well. Uh, they put a lot of effort into getting the garden uh, looking uh, as good as, as it does. And, well, he was perhaps just a little bit concerned about its, its sort of future state and wondered if he could offer any help. Uh, he invited us to come around to his garden to have a look, to learn from what he did. And when, once restrictions allowed, he was happy to come around to, to ask, to give us a few pointers. Well, that was about six months ago now. I'm not sure I've learned that much yet, but what I have learned in that short space of time is that gardens don't happen by accident. They don't just grow. Well, of course, they do just grow. They grow in all the ways that you don't really want them to if you're not careful. Uh, experiencing the blessing of a beautiful garden takes time it takes effort it takes energy you need to put in a bit of a, a proper shift there's some real hard work and, and regular attention that is involved and it isn't any different with our relationship with christ to nurture it to encounter god to pursue god's presence it's going to require a little bit of effort on our part. We have to cultivate our prayer lives, our worship. We have to commit to church, to meeting together, to sharpening one another in this journey of faith, to contributing, to playing our part. And playing our part is about serving in all sorts of ways, which I'm sure many of you do amazingly. But it's also, of course, about um, financial commitment. It's often said that uh, unless we as Christians are giving to our, our church, giving to our churches, well, nobody else is going to do that. There might be lots of people who will give to all sorts of other things, but they're probably not going to give to the church. Uh, and what we do with our money is probably one of the, the foundational issues for us all in terms of discipleship. It's really hard to give. I find it really hard to give and to, to give generously, especially at a time when everything seems so fragile in life as it has done over the last 18 months or so. If we're to pursue God's blessing, first, we need to make every effort. But second, we're to meet Jesus. Yes, we have a part to play, but ultimately any blessing that we experience is the gift of God. According to Psalm 32, the Lord chooses Zion. It's not the other way round. And this, of course, is at the heart of the good news of the gospel. Uh, as John puts it in John chapter one, verse 14. And the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory. The glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And Eugene Peterson, in his message version 
of the Bible translates this verse really beautifully. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. The word made flesh, Jesus Christ, the presence of God, the very presence of God made his dwelling among us. He moved into the neighbourhood. The, the good news of the gospel is that God's presence is no longer just located in Zion, in the temple in Jerusalem. In the person of Jesus, through the work of the spirit, God's presence is made available to us directly at any time, in any place. We can know and experience God's abundant blessing. And I pray that that might be the experience of all of us. As the blessing song, the song I started with, as it so powerfully declares, and I'll finish this, finish with this as a prayer for us all. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. Amen.